Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmielkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question of the day is, what is the importance of the cerebellum in brain rehab? And this is really important to me because we utilize every day the cerebellum's ability to coordinate. The, uh, the cerebellum is the conductor. It coordinates actions, it coordinates thoughts, and it coordinates emotions. And there is, again, so because actions, thoughts, and emotions, it does not only these coordinate these motor movements or motor control, but it helps coordinate sensory inputs. It helps coordinate also um, uh, thoughts and then those emotions or like mood issues. And so what I want to discuss today is not only the importance of it, but then how this actually happens. And so the cerebellum has more neurons than the rest of the brain combined. It's the little brain, okay? The cerebrum is the top of the head, uh, the top of the brain, while the cerebellum is right behind in this uh, lower area, kind of right below the, uh, the skull or right inside the skull um, behind the neck. And so the cerebellum, again, has more neurons in that little area than the rest of the brain combined. And therefore, it has this ability to accept air signals or accept a lot of information. And it tries to integrate that information, integrates visual system with the auditory system, with um, more proprioceptive or muscle communication with the vestibular system. And it integrates that and it figures out, is there an air message? Is there an air signal? And if it does, if it realizes this air signal, then what can happen is there can be a proper uh, connection or a proper change so that we can improve and have better motor learning. So uh, let's go right to the paper and So here is the paper, and we are discussing, um, it's called the, it's a consensus paper, it's called Cerebellar Reserve from Cerebellar Physiology to Cerebellar Disorders, it's from 2020 in the journal The Cerebellum, and talk about how Cerebellar Reserve refers to the capacity of the cerebellum to compensate for tissue damage or loss of function resulting from many ideologies. These ideologies could be like stroke or trauma. Um, it could be, um, which are more structural issues generally. It could be autoimmune diseases or inflammation or infection that would cause more of these like metabolic or immune related cerebellar ataxias, neurodegenerative ataxias. Um, and so they kind of classify these into a structural cerebellar reserve which might occur after a stroke or trauma where a specific area in the cerebellum is damaged versus a functional cerebellar reserve where maybe the whole cerebellum is not working as well, but it's not completely damaged yet. There's still some working viability. And so they talk about how it's important in the control of eye movements and the important or in the coordination of voluntary and axial. So more of spine and appendicular arms and limbs and cognitive functions. Um, and how the cerebellar reserve is potentiated by environmental enrichment. So more environmental enrichment, more ability to handle multiple uh, stimuli, whether it be uh, visual movement, visual stimuli with that vestibular and auditory um, can help improve that cerebellar reserve, especially after maybe a traumatic brain injury later on, which is why maybe like athletes can do so well generally after traumatic brain injuries versus a typical person in the population because athletes are constantly using more of their environment with their visual system, their auditory system, their proprioceptive system to perform at a high level. And so when they get a concussion, maybe they're not going to be able to perform at that same level, but they do better and have better outcomes post-concussion than other uh, traditional or other normal lay people. And so all due to that environmental enrichment. Um, we look at the potentiation of that cerebellar reserve it may lead to compensation and restoration of function in the setting of cerebellar diseases. Uh, it can also, also help in the disorders primarily of the cerebral, again, 
that top part of the brain by enhancing cerebellar mechanisms of action. Okay. So the first part of this has just a bunch of different uh, meanings of reserve. We talked about functional reserve. Um, and let's just say the reserve is basically the notion that uh, was introduced that the sense of resistance to aging or dementia, basically that we can have uh, other brain areas take over due to neuroplasticity, other neurons take over. With cerebellar reserve, we have this resilience to impairment and also to the capacity of reversibility, as in we can reverse damage to areas outside the cerebellum or inside the cerebellum itself. Structural cerebellar reserve is that acute structural damage and cell death to specific areas like strokes or injuries right to one specific spot. Compensation is usually by the remaining intact cerebellar areas outside of the lesion area. And the functional cerebellar reserve might be a gradual cell death as occurs with these immune mediated or infection mediated issues. And then functional restoration and compensation occur actually within the lesion where we can kind of build back some of that strength and stop the immune mediated or neurodegeneration going on. Um, Here's just that stat that I was talking about with more neurons. There's between 60 to 70% of the brain's neurons are in the cerebellum, which is just crazy for how small it is, but how much architecture there is in there. Um, so I just want to show this is an important kind of graph to look at. So with the cerebellar reserve here on the left or the y-axis, time course on the x-axis, as we start declining with cerebellar damage, we can always pick that up and there's this like restorable stage, right? So as there's declining, either in neurodegeneration, immune mediated issues or TBIs, the faster we get in, the more ability we have to restore that ability, right? Restore. There, it does become a non-restorable stage. And so this might be for a stroke or TBI, depending on how much damage there was, how fast that happens and how fast we can get just treatment to prevent inflammation from occurring more damage. Uh, the faster we can do that, the faster then we can start improving from the with the cerebellum. Um, but there may be a point where we can't restore it as much. Okay, While this one might be more of the immune mediated where there's a slow gradual decline and then it gets faster and faster. But if we can find a way to stop it and then work and use the cerebellum, we can restore some symptoms and function. Um, okay, then here is kind of talking about the, here's a picture showing the difference between that structural and uh, structural issue and more of like functional. Actually, I guess this is more both, both structural, but let's say we have a primary function for motor function and then we have a reserve ability. These let's say are areas in the cerebellum. If there is a primary, if there's a lesion affecting the primary and the reserve because they're close together, then we're gonna have a more high risk cerebellar reserve. We might not be able to compensate for it. While on the other hand, if the primary is in one area and the, the reserve is in a farther off area, when the primary gets injured, we have a better ability to create this reserve and therefore we can have better motor function or better cognitive function from working with this reserve by rehabbing this area so that we can take control more over of this function. Um, and the last one I wanna show is just another like potentially um, uh, way to then restore function with that cerebellar reserve. So similar to that last, that, uh, that first graph we showed, there's that restorable stage. And so this delta or this triangle is this therapeutic intervention. If we can find like a cause cure treatment that's aimed at stopping the progression of a disease, let's say it is one of these metabolic disease, immune mediated uh, diseases, then we can stop or prevent that, that decrease in function, that, that those decrease in the neurons and cerebellar issues. Uh, and then we can also have neuromodulation therapies aiming at potentiating or improving the cerebellar reserve to restore function. And so this is how we can basically stop the prevention and or decrease the prevention, decrease that, that neurodegeneration process so that people can have more lives. Uh, if it is a neurodegenerative, more, more years in their life, if it is a neurodegenerative disease or just more function longer. Um, and again, so that's where we can delay this progression, have more life before it kind of keeps going down or 
if we can control it because we have this kind of cure treatment, uh, maybe we can stop the progression completely and then improve and restore um, the, the function of the cerebellum, restore that plasticity in a better way. Um, so uh, that is that. I think uh, the reason why I like this one is because like I said, the cerebellum is super important in brain rehab and we activate the cerebellum in multiple ways and how the cerebellum integrates all these different movements are movements and thoughts and emotions are so important. And so that is why we are training uh, using proper this temporal summation and spatial summation to train these areas. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Sorry for the video being a little glitchy here today, um, but hopefully you still got the main points of the video. Uh, thanks again. Have a great day and stay healthy.